We are back, you are chatting with John P. Today I'm going to be talking about some, some would consider to be unethical practices. In fact, I think a lot of people would be uh, considering these items to be unethical practices, but definitely can be considered scams as well. Now, these are not going to be scams or practices that are frequently done by fellow collectors. I think it's uh, fair to say that many collectors kind of feel a sense of camaraderie in the watch industry. So while there are some people that try to pull fast ones on you, um, collector to collector, I think that um, it might happen a little bit more so when dealing with individuals around the world, quite literally everywhere in the world, that have uh, only to gain from the transaction uh, financially. And so what I mean by this is, as a watch dealer, the last couple of years, we have Delray Watch, delraywatch.com, you know, I've really been exposed and my eyes have been opened up to some parts of the watch industry where, depending on where you're at, it tends to be in some areas, you know, as well as some jewelry district type uh, places, more the kiosks. I won't be naming any individual names here, but I see some practices and I want to share these with you because when I was just collecting watches and not in the trade, in the business at this level, I was still involved from the technology perspective, but I was not involved in the level that I am currently today, I had no idea that some of these practices were happening and I don't know if I would have felt taken advantage of, but certainly I would have thought a little bit extra and equipped with uh, knowing these things, I certainly would have been able to bargain a little bit better and also get a better deal. Speaking of better deals, that is our main goal at DelrayWatch.com to deliver you the best deals. And if you don't believe me, check it out and look at the prices. I've, I actually truly believe that Currently, we're the absolutely most competitive place on the internet for pre-owned watches and also new watches. So the first item, oh, by the way, yes, guys, still have the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 in that red grape on the wrist. It's, it's become my casual everyday wear. Really recommend this. I think I did a video about this uh, somewhat recently. Number one on the list is some dealers or traders will take out the links in new watches and still sell the watches new. This is very popular with Rolex. This is very popular with gold watches. With gold watches, especially when we talk about like some gold Patek Philippe's, the, the links can fetch hundreds and hundreds of dollars. If you get into some rare watches, even more than that. And the links are also in that range for stainless steel Rolex sports models for current generation bracelets. And so some dealers will take out two, three links and sell a brand new watch that fits a seven inch wrist, which might be the average in some countries, but it's far from a new watch in my opinion. So if you're shopping for a new watch and you're in a place and you don't necessarily know the dealer, make sure to ask how many links there are because if you are a larger guy or have a larger wrist, you might have to find links and then that adds to the overall purchase price of the watch and if you're paying a premium and you probably are if someone is taking links out of the watch to make a little bit extra, then you may have to find links elsewhere and that can be problematic. So make sure to check the links on new watches, especially if you do not know the seller. Next, I am shocked that this happens, but quite honestly, there are dealers out there and traders out there that really don't inspect their watches. They don't have a service center, they don't have staff on board that know the watches, and with that come the accessories, including straps. And so when we consider watches that get sold, sometimes you have a collector that puts on an aftermarket strap. It might, you know, it's essentially it's a replica strap. It says, you know, JLC on it, or it says, you know, any of the other names of any of their other manufacturers and, you know, for the untrained eye, okay, just a strap, whatever, but no, not all straps that come on the watches are authentic. People buy them on eBay, people buy them on Etsy, any other place, and they could just be aftermarket and nobody knew. So always here at Delray Watch, we make sure to inspect the strap 100%, and if the stitching looks a little bit off, and there's a couple of other telltale signs, maybe I can make a video on this if you really wanna know how to detect um, you know, a fake strap, but we go through, we make sure that it's correct alligator, all of that, look at the logo, and it's part of our intake and inspection process, and if there's any questions at all, we get rid of that strap and get a new one, or we put it on an aftermarket strap, just depending you know, what type of watch it is, the price point, things of that nature. So fake straps, I see this happening more and more, and I really do just blame it on some of these marketplaces where you know, items get sold as being authentic, and it's really difficult to tell to, from the untrained eye. Next, 
Sometimes dealers will just put a lot of oil or grease in certain parts of the watch instead of servicing the watch and cleaning it out just to quickly get that watch to keep time so that they can sell the watch. Not all dealers offer watches with warranties. So if you're buying a watch at a kiosk somewhere or once again from an unknown seller or more of like a trader, sometimes they do these things where, ah, uh, you know, the profit margin's so slim Maybe they, they don't really have the, the room in there to service the watch, especially if they don't have their own watchmaker, they have to pay retail for a service somewhere. That doesn't work. And you know, depending on how they feel and how ethical they are and their level of morality, they might put some oil and dump some oil in there. I don't know exactly how it's done because I'm not a watchmaker, but Hans, our professional watchmaker that has so much experience working on tourbillons, technical director of Vacheron, he knows all these things and he was telling me, yeah, he's seen it before in his watchmaking history where sometimes people will just put some oil in there and they can do it in such a way where it's a few seconds and it'll keep the watch running for maybe a couple of weeks until that oil kind of disperses and clogs up and gets mixed in with all the dirt and gunk. So make sure also, once again, I recommend, this is my suggestion, to ask about the service history if you have any questions about the dealer, if there's anything that doesn't quite add up, maybe you should kind of pump on the brakes and do a little bit more investigation. Next, this one is also happening a lot and I couldn't believe how common this was. And a lot of collectors, when they call us, they also don't believe how common this is. The box and papers may not actually be for the watch. Now, it's hard to believe, right? For Rolex, everything's pretty clear cut, standardized when we're talking about boxes and papers. For Omega, the same can be also told. But when we talk about other brands that are, you know, they have a little bit different history, they've gone between different companies and structures and they're rebranding. Let's talk about the Corums, let's talk about the Gerard Perigos, arguably some of the other brands, even Breitling has made a lot of changes to their packaging or lack thereof, if you if you know what I mean with their, their uh, cardboard boxes currently. But a lot of brands, they've changed that. And so sometimes, you know, especially when dealers buy dozens of watches from a certain manufacturer at a time, that's very popular with, with Corum, for example, you get mix and, and match boxes and the papers. Now the papers still might be valid for that watch because it's all up to the discretion of the manufacturer and the distributors at the end of the day. But what that means is a lot of times you can just dealers will grab a box or papers that just for the brand pair it with the watch and charge a steep premium for the watch so make sure to check out the box and papers once again if you question the dealer you question where the watch is coming from see if it seems reasonable you know the reference number might be for a different watch but once again sometimes these things do happen but i do see dealers out there that quite literally stack boxes and papers and pull one off the shelf and pair it with a watch and charge a premium. So keep your eyes out, not a big deal in my opinion, but it does happen and some people do care. Next, some watches have the wrong crown. Now this one can be very difficult to spot if a company doesn't properly inspect their watches. And even if they do inspect their watches, there's so many different crown types, shapes, sizes, and logos. It can be difficult for someone that does not have 100% full knowledge of every brand across the board and model, which is honestly, there's so many watches and models and brands, it can be very difficult, but sometimes watches will get the wrong crown. You know, someone perhaps needed a Zenith crown and they had a JLC laying around to look very similar and the watchmaker put it on or someone took their watch to a watchmaker that, you know, was kind of a self-trained fly-by-night watchmaker and they might have been able to fix it, but they put on the wrong crown. And this happens very frequently with vintage watches but it just makes the watch wrong. And sometimes when customers send us a watch they wanna sell, cause we buy watches from customers and we trade here, it'll have the wrong crown and we'll tell them and they won't even know. They'll say, oh, well I took the watch to XYZ watchmaker. I don't know, they had it repaired. Are you sure it's the wrong crown? Yes, we were sure it was the wrong crown. And this happens, I wouldn't say all the time, but it does happen and in a pinch it happens. So once again, if you're not sure about where the watch is coming from, you don't trust the dealer, Check it out, give it an overall inspection and look for the crown because I do see an unethical practice of pulling parts from other watches to make one watch that's more valuable whole or seemingly whole and sometimes they get lazy with it and the parts end up being misbranded or wrong, especially because a lot of watches and parts are interchangeable at the end of the day. And with this also comes swapped rotors. Now this 
happens a ton. Think about it. You have a base at a movement or even a decorated at a movement and the rotor or the, uh, the oscillating weight, it has one brand on it, it's supposed to be, and you take the watch to some watchmaker somewhere and it needed a part and they can't order that rotor because it's 15 years old and it has to come from Longines or something like that. So they just pull one of their spare rotors or parts that has the brand some other brand name that fits that movement because the movements, a lot of these movements are basically the same and they pop it on, they close the case back and the collector you have really no idea. So once again, this is another trust the dealer type of thing. I know it. this all seems like I'm really saying like, hey, check out Delray Watch. And you know, I guess it really does boil down to trusting the dealer. And if not for us, any other dealer out there, there's many other great dealers out there that have service centers. And so make sure when trusting the dealer, they have a service center. In my opinion, if they don't have a service center and they sell volume, it's very unlikely that they truly know the watches that they're trading in. And I think that's a huge red flag. And even myself, when I'm looking for a watch that we don't have in stock that I wanna put in my personal collection, I'm very, very cautious where uh, I find that watch to bring in because let's face it, not all the watches I'm looking to add in my personal collection do come in the doors here. So I do shop with other dealers, a lot of which I, I am friends with, but for the reasons because I do trust them. So look for a service center. I think that is actually a pretty safe bet. If they have a service center, they're probably on the up and up. But what do you guys think? Are there any other kind of little gotchas or perhaps scams that maybe you've either fallen for or not fallen for? I would love to hear it in the comments below. Please do not forget the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. It keeps me making videos for you. And also, uh, I, I have to comment. I haven't been making too many videos because we've just taken on an operations director here um, at the company and we're, we're really excited. So it should free up a lot of my time to make more videos, a lot of Federico's time to make more videos. So I'm certainly on track to at least be making one video per week. And if there's anything you would love to see in the videos in the future, leave in the comments below. Would love to see it. Thanks guys. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.